We are going for a speedy trip. Very speedy, in fact, because we're taking a speedboat. Oh my god! <laughs> We're gonna zoom to a place called Manta Ray Bay where there's a really famous fish called, I believe it's George. This is slim. Three knots on the face, skipper! I'm Soph, the skipper. Oh, and we have a fluffy crew member too, Chili. We live aboard our 1989 Duncanson 34. She may be vintage, but her glory days are far from over. We're taking her around Australia, exploring our beautiful Aussie backyard. We put new videos out every Monday, so subscribe. Come along with us. This place is magical. The rich ocean blue waters meeting the white coral beaches is pretty damn enticing. Of course, we could not wait to dive in and check out the underwater world. Beneath the surface, the large coral bombies lacked vibrancy. We've since been told by some locals that a lot of the coral around the Whitsunday Islands got churned up by Cyclone Debbie way back in 2017. Ferocious winds smashed the Whitsundays. And is still recovering from the damage caused back then. With winds being recorded at 267 kilometers an hour, which is like the equivalent of 145 knots, it's no wonder the coral took some hits. We did see some of the biggest parrotfish we've seen yet though, and these beautiful fish are so important for reef regeneration. Taking up to 20 bites a minute, these fish can chew through around 90 kilograms of dead coral and turn it into sand every year, allowing new coral to spur and thrive, and hopefully, with their help, the reef will bounce back and make a full recovery in no time. It's kind of weird, actually, to think that a lot of these beautiful beaches we're exploring are made up of a decent percentage of fish shit. That was fun. That was... I haven't seen parrotfish that big ever it was like that was cool they were cool fish we're we're hanging out for a coffee basically yeah we gotta gotta go back for a coffee yeah i was like so do you want a coffee <laughs> like snorkeling around on the reef oh, coffee would be nice Adequately caffeinated, we dropped off our two hour mooring, which we were meant to get off about two hours ago, and set off in the direction of Butterfly Bay, where we're hoping to tee up with some newly made friends aboard a small but quick motorboat to check out some more bays. There are so many little private beaches here that you could just like crab at. Oh, we're never gonna wanna leave this joint. We are going for a speedy trip. Very speedy, in fact, because we're taking a speedboat. I'm spinning in circles just thinking about it. It's gonna be great, it's gonna be exciting. We're getting picked up and we're gonna zoom around the corner to a place called Manta Ray Bay where there's a really famous fish called, I believe it's George. A big, big fish. Going in a fast boat to see a big fish. So fond of me address the camera, I hope I covered everything. Excellently. Thank you, I know I did really well. <laughs> super speedy, super quick, covered everything, nailed it. That's 
took off like three minutes. <laughs> oh, ow, that was so quick. <laughs> The fish obviously know what the bottom of a boat means. Food. <laughs> a lot of the tour boats will head out here and lure the fish in with bread for everyone to see. Within minutes of rocking up and picking up a mooring, we had hundreds of fish surrounding us. From little yellowtail fusiliers to a ton of batfish and then moving over to your pelagic's giant trevally and of course the most famous of all, George, a Maori wrasse. What a day. We've just had fish encounters beyond our wildest imaginations. It was a surreal experience to be kicking it at our own private little beach, hand feeding giant trevally and huge wrasse. Just chilling beneath us, casually down under the bommies, was an abundance of coral trout. It was truly one of the wildest wildlife experiences we've had yet. Still just in awe, we decided to kick back and have a cheeky G&T on the bow while watching the GTs and just taking in the beautiful Manta Ray Bay that we had somehow managed to score all to ourselves. It's been amazing here, we're gonna go for a little Cruise. I don't know what we're doing. What are we doing? I think we're going for a little cruise. Um, going out around here. We're just going to putt along, like off the Putter, putter along it. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> At no, 16 like, knots. Yeah. We'll just putt around there and we'll yeah, have well. a look at the cliffs and Sick. stuff and then we'll turn around and cruise with it. Sick. Sounds good. Bye, fishies. <laughs> Fiona on the wheel and a drink in hand, we plonked ourselves up on the bow, admiring the view. As the stunning mountains reached into the turquoise waters, we sipped our way towards the sunset. We really lapped up the golden hour on this stunning evening. It's not often we take Nakama out for a sunset joy ride like this. And then the sun set and Fiona dialed it up to 22 knots and we got back to Nakama pretty damn quickly. Avocados are finally right. Yes, in burger buns.
Welcome to today's adventure. We don't know what it is yet. We haven't decided. We're going to no. eat burgers and think about it. While we eat burgers and think about it, I don't know, make yourself a cup of coffee or something. We're just going to do a live playthrough of us just eating breakfast for the next seven minutes. It was another day in the Whitsundays, and waking up in Butterfly Bay, I decided to take the paddleboard for a spin to convince Slim that it really is a necessary item to have on the boat. We also ran into an old friend of ours. G'day mate. How you going? <laughs> and Slim found a tree. But I did want to show you this tree. I've never seen anything quite like it. Well I have, it's like a palm tree, but it's a cool palm tree. How the trunk? It's like something you'd find in Turkey. We now also have a little bit of an idea of what we're going to do today. You guys remember Luke and Fumi, right? Well, they're in the Whitsundays too, and we want to go find them and say good day. How you going? As we keep getting sent straight to their voicemail, with our detective skills, we have identified that they're out of range. Which narrows our search to the eastern side of the islands. You don't get a reception around here as the steep peaks block everything. How's your day been? You've never rested our way back and the down there that's a screen around here. We think we might have spotted Luke and Fumi and we're, we're turning around. We're changing course. Change course, we're heading in. We reckon it's them. We're heading in. He decided to drop anchor. I don't know why. I don't know. It is them. We found them. We're gonna go say hello. We just realised uh, it's not important. Don't worry about it. We're gonna go say hello. <laughs> Araminta, Araminta! Did you just wake up? Were you guys asleep? Hey, yeah, we just have a spoon. Where are you? These guys are more switched on. Yeah. Way more switched oh, on no. than we are. We got them, and we will be available for hire as your private detectives as of this Monday. Just call 1300 Slim and Soph, hit the subscribe button and the bell, and we'll find your missing persons. That's 1300 Slim and Soph, and for the first 100 callers, you can hit that like button as well for free. Nah, but it was so nice to see these guys. It has been a while. We caught up quickly as there was no moorings left here, and where we were anchored was pretty exposed. So we set off in search of a nearby anchorage with a little more protection and aim to rendezvous with them again soon. Tell me something I've been wondering It's been weighing on my mind Like a record we keep stuttering Still replaying the same. We have the current against us coming through here. We've normally scored it with us last couple of times so <laughs> yeah it's a bit slower when you're beaten into it no, it's like rapids it's like white water rafting knackers take ourselves back to the beginning let's put a song and rewind i remember how we used to sound like a finely tuned guitar we've just seen a little mooring ball it's like a little pit stop. I feel like I'm on a road trip and I've just seen a roadhouse or something. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> we've seen a mooring ball on the side of the road and we've decided we're just going to pick up this and just chill out. We're both tired. We've done a lot of motoring today. I don't know if we've done much else but motor. <laughs> sort of. Anyway, so yeah, it's time for us to stop. And the desert is so but our life spins out like coming fading. I just stubbed my toe trying to get up here. And I'm bleeding. <laughs> it's all good. So the mooring balls have been really annoying at night and hitting the hull. So we've been trying to pull more of the line up and the boy trying to get it up so it doesn't smash on the 
on the side of the hull. Change of plan this mooring set up different to some of the other ones, so we're going to try and get ourselves some space. Years have passed and I got old. This is a nice spot. I'm happy that we chose this spot. I need to learn how to tie. No, I don't. Genius. If you've ever heard the saying that lures catch more fishermen than fish, well, it's certainly the case for me. While I sit here and figure out how to use these things, I thought I'd just take the time to say a quick thanks for watching. As always, we really hope you enjoyed this week's episode, and if you're really frothing the adventures and want to help us out along the way, please feel free to check out our Patreon page and join the crew. Regardless, we look forward to catching you next week, where we reconnect with Miles and Luke and Fumi, and with the whole crew back together, we have a hell of a time exploring and getting up to mischief on the islands. I bought this goon about three months ago. I bought all these bottles of wine. I didn't drink the I didn't drink the goon. I just drank the bottle. So I'm all I'm left with is the goon. Anyway, bye for now. Not forever. Much love. Slim and soap.